Biden's foreign policy is coalition-based, but it's weak and naive. Why? Because it doesn't contemplate realpolitik. Some people don't care about your rules-based order or the values that matter so much to you or uh, ideals that are inconsequential in the face of power politics. In many ways, he's a lot like Obama 2.0. Uh, he doesn't necessarily enforce things. He just states what cannot be done, what must not be done. The red line in Syria comes to mind for Obama, and Biden seems to be making himself a sort of version of Obama. The notion of this is who we are, a statement often employed by Biden and by Obama alike, is utterly meaningless. Perhaps the most ridiculous thing is the idea that Biden is negotiating simultaneously with the Iranians as he seeks to curtail the action of Russia. However, he cowers every time Russia mentions a nuclear weapon. Well, what do you think the Iranians are thinking, and others? Get a nuclear weapon as soon as possible. No one messes with you. Biden was initially strong out of the gate. His decision to reveal classified information relating to a supposed false incursion by the Ukrainians, which the Russians would then use as a provocation to retaliate, was a great idea. As was his decision to provide a list of names of people Moscow might want to run Ukraine. However, from there, the will flagged. And indeed, he was dragged virtually kicking and screaming to provide sanctions. Once he saw that the Congress was going to act, he didn't want to be left behind. Similarly, when the Russians withdrew from the northern Ukraine, we should have been arming Mariupol to the teeth. We did not do this. So there seems to be uh, an absence of confidence or will to provide any real defense to the Ukrainians. For example, the MiGs that were out there that people were saying should be sent to Ukraine. Why not chop them up as parts and send them to Ukraine? Call it whatever you want. Or leave the keys in the car and say, we don't know who took them. But Biden has not done that. So we're left in a situation where there could potentially be a frozen conflict for a long time. Ukraine could be left as a rump state. And there doesn't seem to be the will to ensure that Russia loses, as Biden claims he wants. It was a masterstroke. It was, it, was, it was brilliant. It was perfectly executed. No, I'm kidding you. It was a dumpster fire. It was a mess. Now, I grant you, Trump left him in a bad position, right? All right, withdrawal timelines being what they are, Biden didn't have a lot of good options. But, I mean, really? This was the best you could make of this? I mean, the region is now a mess. There were, for the American side, there hadn't been casualties in a year. We had 2,500 to 3,500 people there keeping the top on this. And we withdrew everyone. And, and it was on such an artificial political timeline, like 9-11, that's the day you decide that you're going to pull out. And when that doesn't work and you see it's kind of sort of going south, you think, oh, I know, this isn't working out. Let's like move the timeline up because that's way better, right? No, no, no. Biden wanted a triumphant political 9-11, 20-year wrap-up ceremony. And instead, he got Saigon. And I guarantee you his advisors were like, no helicopters on rooftops, no helicopters on rooftops. And what did he get? Helicopters on rooftops. Those same advisors were probably saying, no bodies falling from the sky. Guess what he got? Bodies falling from the sky, strangely reminiscent of 9-11. It was an absolute, absolute debacle. And of course, this also eroded American credibility. I mean, regionally, once again, it's a complete mess. So, dumpster fire. The Middle East is a mess. What else is new? However, the new caveat here is that Biden has absolutely infuriated the Saudis. And he's done so on a numerous different fronts. I wrote about this in my first view from the carriage house. And he has completely alienated them. They won't even take his calls. And he's asking them to pump more oil. Not going to happen. At the same time, he is negotiating a contract with the Iranians, the Saudis' mortal enemy. So what do you think Saudi's going to do? You're talking about delisting the IRGC. 
You're talking about giving the Iranians all sorts of goodies. We've already delisted the Houthis, and we also wouldn't even sell the Saudis Patriot missiles. So they're quite frustrated, and the place is a mess, and we don't seem to be making any headway on the Iranian deal. It's a wash, rinse, repeat cycle of negotiations, pocketed gains, going back to the negotiation table. So the Middle East in general is not going well at all. France is America's oldest ally, which is why it got a little bit awkward in the room when the Aussies decided to buy US submarines and not French submarines. The French seemed to be caught off guard by this and Biden did too. Biden claimed that he, honest to God, didn't know that uh, the French hadn't been told, which kind of makes sense. I do think he probably was the last guy to know. Nonetheless, the Aussies are getting serious. They were sanctioned by China in a pretty profound way, and they have recognized that China is a threat. Um, the French are okay. You know, some fences have been mended there. Uh, perhaps most interesting is the relationship with India, which is founded on the Quad. And I think America has some uh, understanding to come to on all of this. The notion that India can't just throw away 70% of its military hardware, which is Russian, that the old non-alignment days weren't truly non-aligned, that there was a bit more of a Russian influence. And I think in time, there will be some understanding in which America recognizes India's past, but also forges a very strong relationship moving forward. Join the conversation at Fair Observer and subscribe to our YouTube channel.